Hi, mamas and friends. It's Sarah from Late Night Coffee Moms. Let's see if I can get my pointer working. Uh, I still can't do it. Okay, yeah, from Late Night Coffee Moms, it's good to see you guys. Um, today is Thursday. So um, if you're watching on YouTube, I have no idea when I post this. I try to do it a week after, but who knows. Uh, and tonight we're going to be taking, talking about math and math curriculums and all that kind of stuff. My girl has a friend over, so if you hear random giggling, that's what's going on. And I might be called away at any minute to go do something for them, but they seem pretty content right now. They're just hanging out and being girls. My oldest is over here, and they're playing video games at the moment, so you might hear the clicking of controllers. And then I've got some birds visiting and a dog, so there's all going to be... <laughs> You know, I was talking about them. There's going to be a lot of little random sounds that aren't normally in uh, in the lives, but it's the sounds of life, right? So I'm happy to have them here. So this week, last Monday, I posted a blog, made a blog post about a math that my family is using now for a homeschooling curriculum. Uh, either you're really into math and you love it and it's your favorite and your best or you tend to hate math that's kind of the that's how those conversations go when you're at a <laughs> a small group meeting usually for homeschooling is you'll have one person really like math and one person really hate math i'm going to check my volume real quick there we go i think i got it working okay so either you love it or you hate it. There are, in any small group, there's parents freaking out, looking for tips on what math they should use. And then there's parents who are looking for tap, uh, courses on writing. Those are the two major things I hear at every small group meeting is, what can I do for math and what can I do for writing? For some reason, we all doubt ourselves on at least one of those two subjects, which begs the question, if you don't learn those subjects well enough in school, why are you sending your kids to a school that will teach them the same way? I might get a little bit in trouble for saying that, but you do what you've got to do, right? Families do what you got to do. So we're going to talk about math. We have been through a lot of math curriculums in our house. We started with Horizons Math, which we really, really liked. It was great. It worked on um, a spiral. So it would introduce him to uh, my student to something and then it would introduce him to new things and then later it come back. It worked good for the time. Uh, it wasn't really at the time, okay, because this was years ago, so they might have updated it since then. But at the time it wasn't all, there wasn't a lot of focus on mastery. It was just repeating, repeating, and, and through the spiral, they were hoping you'd gain mastery, but you didn't wait to have mastery before you moved ahead. It was your basic worksheet uh, curriculum, and it was nice. Uh, one of my favorite things about that curriculum was that it, the, the, the little nugget that the teacher relates to the student was simple. It was easy, and after doing one or two of the new problems with my kiddo they got it and they took off okay and then we tried what a lot of people had told us at the time was the best math ever and that was saxon math now i had done saxon math as um, a homeschooler myself i was homeschooled for one semester of my life and i did saxon math and all i remember about saxon math is that it was very very very, very repetitive. <laughs> and it drove me crazy because it was so repetitive. But a lot of people like that. A lot of people like setting a timer for math and you have an hour to do math every day and whatever you're repeating is just helping you master math better. So they like Saxon. Saxon did not work for us. It took, it took a course that we were doing that we were getting done well in about 30 minutes time and made that same course take an hour and a half and getting less work done and more confusion. So for us, Saxon left 
almost as soon as it came in our house. It just did not work for us. Um, and at that time, I was only really teaching math to one student. Okay, so there's that. Then we heard about Matthew C. Okay, Matthew C is great. There's a lot of families out there that use it. It has um, manipulatives and instructional videos and worksheets and tests, and it's very, very mastery based. The only real complaint I've heard about um, Matthew C, at least for the elementary levels, is that it doesn't line up with public school or private school curriculum. So instead of going on a spiral like they tend to do, you will take as long as you need to figure out every form of addition you can possibly figure out before you move on. So as far as I understand it, that even includes fractions and decimals and all that kind of stuff where the students of the same age working the same in, in a public school or in a private school will have already moved on to subtraction, maybe even multiplication, but they haven't hit, quite hit fractions or um, decimal points yet. Does that make sense? So it's very, uh, what would you say, operational, operations-based, function-based, and you, you work to master it. So we tried that for a little bit, and that was with one of my, my, other, my other students, my youngest student, but we did not like it. It didn't work for us. Again, it took a subject that could usually be done well. That's, that's my standard, done well um, with understanding that took 30 minutes to complete and took it to make it last an hour and a half. Is that good? Sure, it's fine, but it just didn't work for us. So yeah, so that was Horizons. We did Horizons for like four years. Saxon for like a month. And Matthew C, we did it for about a quarter, okay? And that brought us about to the two maths we're using now. We're using two maths because I have two children and they both learn differently. What do you guys say about that? Do your kids learn differently? Are they different people? <laughs> so that's one of the luxuries luxuries of homeschooling is that I can direct my children to a curriculum or a method of homeschool or just oh, even a time of day that works better for them because I don't have to make it fit the other students in my classroom. I just make it fit them, right? And so math is one of the subjects we don't really do together. We do um, like memory work, let me fix that a little bit. Memory work together, like we'll practice our multiplication tables, that kind of stuff out loud, kind of together. But we don't do the math curriculum together. That's because I have one student who is in Algebra 2 and one student who is just now mastering, uh, just now dabbling in fractions and decimals and stuff. Okay, so those are very two different kinds of math, abstract and concrete maths and all that kind of stuff. So. We use two different math curriculums. I also have two very different kids. They're just different. What they need is different. What they like is different. And so two different maths because the rest of the curriculum we pretty much do together, math and reading and writing to some extent is where we separate. So I'm gonna take you through uh, my oldest math really quick. I don't have his math book here, but I have like last year's math book here, so I'll show you it. Um, you don't need to get it from me, babe, thanks. Uh, so what happened with him is we were doing Horizons. I think we even did Horizons up through sixth grade with him. So we did it for more than three years. We did it for six, seven years with him and it worked well. We were coming to the end of that math program at that time. They didn't have another curriculum ready for, you know, like the middle school years or whatever. Um, but what was, it was like the bear of our day. So we would have our together time and we would have reading, whatever, and then math would drag on for two to three hours. Some of this was an attitude issue. Some of it was an attitude issue with my kid and some of it was with me. Some of it was the stubbornness of my child. Some of it was stubbornness of me not being willing to back off a little bit or you know, make sure you didn't have to do every single problem exactly as mom wanted. And some of it was stubbornness with them. That's just how it works. Homeschool does that. It grows everyone. So we found Life of Fred math, and we love Life of Fred 
Life of Fred math for my oldest, okay? You'll see why it doesn't work so well for my youngest in a minute. We have done fractions, decimals and percents, pre-algebra with biology, I think, pre physics, sorry, pre-algebra with physics, pre-algebra with biology, pre-algebra with economics, and yes, those subjects are weaved throughout the curriculum. So much so that as my son starts hitting up things like biology and physics, he is seeing things he's already seen in Fred, and it's more easily conquered because he's already kind of played with it in math. My, my son loves random information. He loves trivia. Uh, we don't do a lot of pop culture in our house, so he loves educational trivia, if that makes sense. Uh, he, it talks about who invented the first straw, all that kind of stuff. He loves that. That's fun for him. Life of Fred is also done in a story. So it's all about Fred, this professor of math, who's only five. Six. Six. I'm being corrected. Okay, he turned six since we've been reading him. Okay, so he starts out as a five-year-old professor of math. He's got all these weird quirks. He has all these crazy adventures. Um, at one point, like one of the stories, he drops a knife on his foot and you have to figure out how much blood he has left in his body. Okay, I think that was in fractions or is that in decimals? Fractions. Yeah, that was in fractions, okay? So it gives him weird reasons to do his math. You have to watch out though because if they read the story and get caught up in that, they will like kind of fudge their way through the math to read the story, okay? So... We, we, we run up against that every once in a while. Not, not too often, but every once in a while we run up to that. So he likes Fred. It took the stress away from it. It again took a subject that he could do well in 30 minutes and knocked it back down to 30 minutes instead of dragging it out for three hours. But this is why this mama likes Fred, okay? Because after doing the first book, we were at a pizza shop. And we were eating pizza for who knows why. I don't know. And my kiddo, just for fun, just for fun, figured out the area of the pizza we had eaten, opposed to the area of the pizza that was left, opposed to the area of the pizza that his sister had eaten, for fun. It was fun. He could explain it to us, how he did it, why he did it, and it was fun. If you can take any school subject and make it fun, but eat, make it that simple to master so that you can just teach it conversationally to people who are eating pizza, I'm going to use your curriculum. It's also a very God-honoring curriculum. Fred, the little six, five-year-old, he loves the Lord and he prays and all this other stuff. So it's a great curriculum. We love Life of Fred. It works wonderfully for my son. It does not work for my daughter. And here's the main reason why. Two main reasons. One, it is story-based. Uh, if you haven't caught on to some of the things that I've been saying before, my daughter has a few challenges when it comes to reading. Um, sometimes she's not embarrassed to talk about it. Sometimes she is. So we're not going to go into that too much. But because it's so reading-based, it means mom had to be there all the time reading it all to her. Whereas my son can just pick it up and do it himself and explain it to me later as I'm checking his work, which is what makes that work for us. Um, but she needed constant reassurance. That and she got so wrapped up in the story, all she could think about was the story. How is he going to solve this problem, Mom? What's going to happen, Mom? And she could not focus on any of the math or the training happening because she was so wrapped up in the story okay so it did not work for her she likes it she likes the story in fact my oldest will sometimes read the story to my youngest and explain the math to her in a casual way like talk about crazy bedtime story homeschool life right but really he'll they'll do that and they enjoy talking about it but it was just too involved for her she's she thrives on emotion and situations and problem solving so she was more concerned with solving fred's emotional stress problem than solving the math that would solve his problem so fred did not work for her at all we tried multiple other things and then here comes 
teaching textbooks. And this is what my blog is about. I wrote it on Monday. Go check it out. It's called Meet Our Math Time Buddy. Even if you, even if you public school or private school and your kid needs help just with math in the summer or whatever, check out their free trial. It's a whole month, 30 days for free without using your credit card. Okay, so it's really for free. They don't harvest your credit card information to use it for later. Go check it out. Go check out my blog. It's called Meet Our Math Time Buddy. I've already said that, but let me tell you why we like teaching textbooks. It is an online curriculum. At one point, it was a book and a, and a CD-ROM, but now it's online, super simple to use, super inexpensive, reasonable for your entire family. But what makes it amazing for us is that it reads every problem and every answer to the student. It talks to them. Also, when my daughter does this math, if she gets a problem correct, it congratu congratulates her right away. Instead of her having to wait for me to check it, by the time I've checked it, her brain is onto something else and she can't remember why it matters that she got it incorrect. She can't even remember what her train of thought was to explain to me how she got something incorrect. But with teaching textbooks, I've seen her get it correct and her celebrate immediately. Oh, I totally figured this out. Yeah, okay, she needs victories like that, especially with her difficulties with reading and stuff. And then I've also seen her bomb a problem over and over and over again but be able to verbalize to me what's going on in her mind with it and me be able to sit and watch her because it's told her she got it wrong immediately after she put the problem in. That is huge. That has just like blown her math time. Just, oh, she's just gone from, she's from great to better with this teaching textbook. Now, um, teaching textbooks, sorry, my brain, I just get so excited for her and he's playing Minecraft and I get really distracted with Minecraft. <laughs> um, but it just works so well. It works so well. It's got little tiny cartoon characters at the top that cheer you on. She's totally all about that. It just works great. So instead of forcing both my kids to do the same math, I've split them up. My son tackles his on his own. I grade his tests. He grades the rest. He fixes the problems. If I don't understand something, he explains it to me. We read the book. I figure it out. We go ahead. My daughter, she uses teaching textbooks. She sits on the computer once a day. I hear, sometimes it's with headphones, but usually it's out loud, so I hear what's going on, even though she doesn't know I'm listening, so that I know what she needs help on that we can bring up casually throughout day-to-day -day conversation without putting a whole bunch of pressure on her. But teaching textbooks has just freed up a huge chunk of her school day that she can now do alone. And if you guys have kiddos that struggle with anything, is it social, if it's, you know, learning difficulties or disabilities, you know how much it means to them when they can finally do something independently. This has made her, this has been it for her. She has just blossomed because she knows she can handle things without me. It's just one subject, but it's given her such hope. So that wraps it up. Our two favorite homeschool masks at this point in our life is Life of Fred. In fact, I'm probably going to keep these books forever unless my son runs away with them when he gets up, grows up and gets married because they're fun. I mean, I would do this math on a Saturday for fun. I have done that. And teaching textbooks. Teaching textbooks is fabulous. Okay. We love it. <sighs> I can't talk enough about them. And they are actually the first sponsor of my blog. So I, I can't even just go on and I can go on about that forever, but go check out that post. It goes into more information about teaching textbooks, but just the independence, just seeing my struggling learner light up because they can do something on their own. It's just one of those like, like little daily miracles that happen that you get to catch when you're homeschooling. All right, that's it on math. I want you guys to drop down in the link what your scariest math, um, I don't know, what kind of, what is that called? Math studies are. Are you in algebra? Um, do you have, oh my goodness. <laughs> he missed his chair. Um, 
are you are you scared of algebra? Are you scared of geometry? Are you scared of decimals and percentages? You know, what curriculums do you guys use at, for your home? I've heard there's some really great ones out there. So write it down for me because you never know. We've changed so many times. You never know. But I think these two are the ones we're going to stick with for the long run. All right, mamas and friends. Until Monday. Catch you later. Bye.